All right, so here it is. So let me throw open the layers once again. And you see we have this layer called cow. It's got the cow on it. I'm actually going to crop it in a little bit. You don't need to do this, but I just don't want to look at all this like tertiary stuff. So I grab my rectangular selection, make a selection around the part I want to keep, and under image, um, I, just, I just hit crop. So again, grab your rectangular selection, which is here, make your selection, and under image, you can choose crop, and it will crop to the to the marquee that you've created. And then to undo your selection or to get rid of it, you can just hit Command D, or under Select, you can choose Deselect. All right, so there's multiple ways to do that. But now I just have a cleaner surface to work on. So I want to do a zoom way in on here. If anybody has problems at all with what we're doing, just raise your hand and stop me, okay? I want to zoom way in on the cow, and you might want to do this with me, and just sort of look at what's the quality of the bitmap that we're going to try to paint, okay? So if you grab your, your zoom tool here, and you just sort of click and expand. We'll get way in on the cow, way in on the cow. All right, so that's just like one line from the cow's sort of upper arm. So what do you what do you see here? Pix <coughs> pixels, right? And they're all either exactly black or exactly white, right? No. This is a grayscale piece of art. Every line is going to feather out from some dark black to some relatively light matte color, okay? That's what makes an image like this sort of tricky to paint because if I start throwing down fully opaque paints on this, I'm gonna lose the quality of the line of the drawing because I'll start painting over some of those mid-ranges and this thing starts to look real mechanical. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna zoom back out. Right, let me check my color mode real quick. Image, mode, all right, I'm in a nice RGB color space, so that's good. Make sure that it's under your image under mode. Make sure you're in a nice RGB color space. That'll just be the best for our painting today. And I'm gonna double tap on this color. I'm just gonna choose like a brownie brown to paint this cow sort of sort of golden brown. And this is gonna be a beautiful color for this little cow. Sort of a caramel brown, milk cow, moo cow. It's gonna be great, right? And so I'm gonna get down here in this leg area and I'm gonna start painting in and around that, that leg line. And you're gonna see things get, get a little bit ugly. So I get my brush, I'm gonna go up to 100% opacity. I got a full flow on there. I'm gonna tone down my size. I'm gonna get it sort of good and small. I need to go smaller than that. I'm just gonna key in a number here. I'm going with the 12 size brush, okay? So again, I tapped on the brush. I've got a color. If you need to put in a color, double tap your color. Choose a color. Don't be too worried about this right now. Just kind of do what I'm doing. And then under your brush, all your controls are right up here. I'm a normal brush, 100% opacity, 12 pixel size. And if I start, I'm on my cow layer, which is my only layer. If I start throwing down paints in there, we've got problems. Because I'm painting over my line, right? I'm losing the integrity of my initial line, and that's not what I want to do. You can say, well, let's, let's lighten up your opacity. Well, now I'm painting, first of all, in semi-opaque tones, which are difficult for printing, if you ever want to print this. And secondly, my brown color is not going to come through as brown because a ton of this background, like white color, is going to go through. And it still just kind of looks like garbage, right, because it gets dark over the dark areas, but it's, it's light over the light areas, and it's just not a fantastic look. Right, so but but I want to paint an intuitive way on this where I keep the the fuzzy, you know, the hand drawn texture. I'm gonna hit Option Command Z and get rid of those strokes. So how do I paint in a way that's intuitive in this workspace? Well, there's basically like two ways you can do it. Let's try the one first. In that I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna drag it underneath cow. I'm gonna call it brown or whatever color I want to paint in. Right. So I made a new layer by tapping this little layer icon. I dragged it underneath cow, I named it what I wanted to name it, and now I'm gonna tap on cow again, and I'm gonna change the layer mode itself from normal to multiply on the cow layer. So tap your cow layer, and up above it, on the, on the layer mode, to toggle down that menu and choose multiply. It's right there in your layers palette. It's, it's just above, there's a few little controls, and then right above that, you've got layer mode. It should be normal by default, Choose Multiply. Let me tell you what Multiply will do. Multiply will sort of allow, let me see if I'm doing this right. Let me lay down a brown real quick here. 
Yeah. Multiply will allow colors underneath to come up through something that has a light or a white value, but it will only enrich or enhance something that has a dark value. So if you look at that new line I laid down there, I'm not harming my hand-drawn sketch at all. But I am pa I'm painting underneath actually all these white pixels, but because I'm in a multiply mode, the white just lets the paint underneath come right through. Now I'm still in a low opacity, so I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to go back up to 100% here on my brush. And I'm going to paint, and yeah, man, I like where this is going. See, I can, get, I can crouch right up against my lines here, and I don't hinder the value of my, of my hand-drawn lines at all. I can paint right over these ones here. They stay, they keep all their gray values, but anything that has sort of a nice, a really light or a really white value to it, it allows the, the brown to really shine through. All right, so now I'm painting in a way that is conducive to what I scanned in, which was a hand-drawn sketch. I'm getting sort of a hand-drawn feel going on the line work here. And I just paint it all up. You can switch to a bigger brush if you want. But you see how this, what's that? Would it paint over, the, like it paints over the black line, right? It paints under it. I'm actually painting right now on a layer below my cow layer. I switched my cow layer to a multiply mode, and I'm painting brown on a layer underneath of it. And multiply will allow my brown to bleed through all the white colored pixels, but it will enhance the dark colored pixels. It'll just sort of bolden them up. And so I get this really nice sort of like painterly, almost like a watercolor feel going on with my cow. It keeps a really natural feel. I don't end up painting over anything on my cow layer. My cow layer is completely normal. I'm painting under it and I'm able to paint right into the black lines and it just, it just keeps them looking nice. See how good my paints look there? They enhance the dark lines and they, and they bleed right through the, the white colored. So anything that has like a really bright or really, um, uh, it will use the, the lightness slider, right? So like if we go image, if we go adjustments, what do I want? You see, see this slider here? Your multiply mode, it won't mess with your hue, but it will, it will use the lightness to figure out. So if something is black on the lightness scale, it will keep it black. But if something is white on the lightness scale, it will let the color shine through it. So it goes pixel by pixel and uses, and uses the lightness to determine whether or not to let color shine underneath of it. Who has questions about that little painting technique? So again, turn your, your layer that has your pencil artwork that you've scanned in, or even if it's inked artwork, turn that layer to multiply, create a new layer underneath of it, and paint away. So like if I wanted his, his spots to be like a different brown, if I want them to be a much darker brown, I can go in here, get me a much darker color, zoom in on this spot over here, Go back to my brush, and I may need, you know, you can go really small with this if you need to, depending on how small the area is that you're painting. I'm going to put that down to about eight. I'm just going to go in here. I'm just going to paint that darker color real nice and careful on there. And you can get right into those, you can get right into your lines that are there because it will just bolden up, it will bolden up your pencil strokes instead of erasing them and coloring over them and making everything look like it's real mechanical just naturally enhance the pencil strokes that you already have there. So now I've got brown with dark brown spots going on. Could chose cream color spot, could chose any color I wanted for those spots. Right? Let me paint one of the horns gold so you can kind of see how it looks with like a light color. I'm going to get up here
I'm going to choose more of a gold, get up here more in the orange territory. Choose me a nice, lovely gold. I love it! Back to my brush. And just start painting. Just start painting in that gold. Going to be a gold little horn, right? I can come right up here around these edges, and it's just nice and soft. My gold enhances my, my dark pencil lines, just like it did with the brown. It just enhances them real nice. Keeps things looking hand-drawn keeps things looking, you know, just like shows through that artist's hand without making things start to look mechanical. And I just keep on painting. I just fill in the area. I'm just going to get all my gold in here. I've got a really small brush. I'm just painting away, getting me a nice gold horn there. Back, back out. Yeah. Now you may say, that's cool, but I want like a highlight, right? Like I want like a highlight on the outside of that gold there. Let me show you a quick tip on that. All right, since I put that gold sort of all alone on a layer of itself, I can grab like the magic wand tool and I can just tap that gold and it just selects it real nice. So now I'm going to go with a lighter gold color. So I'm going to get way up here like this. Now one way you can do that is you can get a brush and you can go back over and you can just sort of highlight things if you want. And that's okay. I mean, if you zoom out of there, that's alright. I mean that achieved the basic effect. But another way to do it, I'm just going to back, back out of that. Another way to do that which is sometimes a bit more intuitive, would be to get your... Here you've got a, a nesting of tools called Dodge and Burn. And I always forget which one does what, but one will darken color values and one will lighten color values. So let me see here. I think Burn is actually going to lighten. And it comes up like a brush. I'm going to make that brush size go down a little bit. I'm going to make that brush size go down. And then sometimes if you just sort of swipe over your... Nope, that's the wrong one. I chose wrong. Oh, I'm on sponge. I want burn. Get your brush size where you want it. Again, that one's wrong. I actually need the dodge. I told you I always get it wrong. Dodge will lighten your stuff. I'm going to go with like a, f a, a much bigger exposure here. There we go. And I'm just sort of painting in a brightening effect onto my bull here. Did anybody see that awesomeness? See how that horn looks really fuzzy and happy now? You could just you could just lay down on that horn and take a nap. The horn is so plushy. It's so plushy. Right? So use the dodge and burn tools. Once you've laid down like a nice field of color and you just want to soften it and make it look a bit more watercolory. Use those dodge and burn tools to either add in light values or to add in dark values. And, and play with the exposure and play with the opacity and just use a really soft touch on it. And you can just work it back and forth and it's a really nice tool. Okay? All right, I'm going to stop the recording at this point so I can share that off.